Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial, and today we are painting Catacross, the Mortark of the Necropolis. Yes, we have another faction leader here from the Age of Sigmar for the Ossiarch Bone Reapers. And you might be thinking, now hold on one second, Mr. War Hipster, that model's missing a few pieces. Well, yeah, it's his friends. They are over here. So we've built him as a single assembly on the base. So we've got cut across here, the base, that's one. And then we have all four of his retinue here as well. And I've just attached them to some spare 25 millimeter slotted bases that I had. Um, they're just chilling out there. A little bit of super glue, so they'll easily snap off when we finish painting them. And what we're going to do is we're going to essentially do this in a couple of stages. So we're going to paint Cat across himself, then we're going to paint the base, and then we're going to paint all four of his men. So we're going to be kind of, we'll probably go quite quickly through those, as in kind of just do them as a as a unit and pick out any of the uh, any of the uh, specific details that they might have. Uh, but we are going to start with him and the base, of course, because then we can just finish them and then pop them on once they are done. Now they've all been primed in grey sear, just as another point of order for the administration here. And well, all that's left to do is to grab our paints, grab our brushes and get started. And that is exactly what we're going to do next. So the place we're going to start with Cat Across is on his large cloak because we've got cloak details that come right up in here. What we don't want to do is kind of start on his body and then have to kind of make it more difficult for ourselves getting in and around it with our brush in order to do the rest of the cloak. So the color that we're going to be using is pterodon turquoise and we're going to start with the inside of the cloak uh, and we're going to start up here by his armpit and we're just going to load up our brush and start applying this pterodon turquoise all over and what we kind of want to try and do is avoid doing what I just did there which is getting too much on the outside because well, there's a lot of cloak to cover here and we want to kind of take this nice and steady making sure that we get as much of all of these details as possible before we move on to the outside it's all right in the instance of just a little bit of a stain just like there just got in there with my finger and wiped it off As you can see, it can be a little bit tricky to navigate. And do just check on the back to see that you don't kind of push out too much. You've got a little blob just there. That'll be all right because that's around the corner. And always the trick with things like this is you want to kind of carefully navigate your brush in. You also want to be careful on the way out because most of the time people are pretty good at getting the brush into the difficult areas but on the way out they rush out so you want to apply the same amount of care to exiting these recesses or these harder to reach places as you do entering them Just whilst we're waiting for all that pterodon turquoise to dry because it's not fully done yet what we are going to do is we're just going to take some leviathan blue and we're going to apply this over the top of the shield facing and his helmet so we're just going to start up here i think
So with that Leviathan blue applied, our cloak is now dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to shade it. And the colour we're going to use is a roughly three to one mix of Pterodon turquoise and Leviathan blue. And I've added two droplets of contrast medium in there just because we've got a lot of paint here to work with because I just want to improve the flow here so we can get a nice smooth coat. And I'm just going to start here. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply this over the top of the entirety of the cloak. Just to bring that color right down. So with that done, whilst it's still drying at the moment, the hard part is actually over. So what we're gonna do is move on to the next color. And that's gonna be some Bale Tan Green. And we're gonna apply this over the top of all of Catacross's skin, bones. And whilst it's quite a strong color, we are gonna be re-layering it. So don't, don't worry too much if it's like, whoa, that's way too green. What we want is we just want this shade in the recesses. Now, if you want to, you can go around and do a recess shade here, but it's just much quicker to do it this way. So with all of that bale tan green applied, just whilst we're waiting for it to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Gilliman flesh and we're going to apply this over two areas. So we've got this kind of stitched skin up here, which kind of, to me, looks like it was once lungs. This guy's dark. <laughs> so we've got both sides of this. Like so, and we need to do the back too. Do we? No, <laughs> we do not. I have the box up. Uh, what we're also going to do with the Gilliman flesh is we're going to apply this over the top of his sash. And with that done, we're then going to take some Black Legion and we're going to use this for a couple of different details. So first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to apply this over the top of the kind of these bits, whatever they're called. I'm pretty certain I've asked what these are called in the comments be below and you've given me the answer and I've immediately forgotten. Basically like his brooches. So we're going to apply this over both of these. Like so. We're going to apply this over the top of this doodad. I'm going to apply this over the top of the bird as well. And we're also going to apply this over the runic bit here on the shield. Like that. 
So with that all done, we're then going to take some Flesh Terrors Red and we're going to apply this over the top of the soft wraps on both his weapons. So we've got the, obviously the large glaive right here, but there is a dagger at his waist. We want to apply this too as well. So with that all done, we've actually applied the Flesh Terrors Red to the strap in here on the shield as well and that is where we are going to go next so the color we're going to be using is wildwood and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the wood So with that wildwood all applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some soul blight grey and we're going to apply this over the top of pretty much all of the remaining bones. In fact, we are just going to apply this over the top of all the remaining bones. I don't know why I said pretty much all. So we're just going to start whacking this over the top and mercifully, unlike most models, is a lot of bone trim rather than metallic trim. <laughs> so I'd recommend having the box art in front of you. This is going to be all of these areas, as you can see, that I've just done on the shield. We've got the bones on his back, that scarab thing. We've got the bit here on the glaive and at the bottom. We've got his headgear. And we've got the areas on the knife as well. So with all that soul blight grey applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to do a little bit of blending on it. Now, this is kind of the tricky part of this kind of paint job because not all of it is the same so bear with me so the color we're going to be using first is black templar and we're going to be applying this over the top of the kind of spine here of the scarab on the back you really don't need very much as you do this like so and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the black temple i'm going to bring it into this part like that we're then going to wash the brush and we're just going to stipple some of it off like that around the base so it gets this kind of fade up into what will be the back of him so that's that bit done we do of course need to do the inside as well but we'll come back to that in just a minute when it comes to areas such as the large bones here we're actually going to do a slightly different thing with them so we're just going to swap him round and on the shield what we're going to do here is we're going to do the same thing across the tips of the bones so we take a dollop of black templar and we apply it like that, in just one movement. We then wash the brush and then we stipple this along to smooth out the transition. Like that. And then we need to do the same thing on the reverse.
like that. We need to do the same thing down here on the other part of the shield, but we're gonna once again move on. And for the rest of our kind of small bones, so for example, up here, we're gonna do the same thing again. So let me just turn this around so I can see what I'm doing. Excellent. So along here, a little bit of black Templar over the bones themselves. Wash the brush. And then sort of blend it out across all of the little bones themselves. Then you want to come round. Do the same thing again on the other side. do this on this part, this part down here, the weapons, the other bones around here, basically everywhere that isn't the large bones on the back there. So with that black Templar blending applied to all of those areas, what we're then going to do is take Nuln Oil and we're going to use this to shade over the top of our bones on the back. Like that. And what we're also going to do, actually, I should just point out, is we're going to shade the back of his headdress as well. So with that now done, what we're going to do is move on to our next colour, which is going to be some thinned down iron warriors. I'm going to apply this over the top of his sword. Well, glaive. Well, big weapon. Big stabby thing. Big sharp thing. <laughs> Whatever the hell it is. Is it a halberd? Is it a glaive? You let me know. With that Iron Warriors all applied, we're then going to take some Retributor armor. I'm going to apply this over the top of well, all of our remaining details, such as the trim here on the shield. Just like this. So with that done, we've got all of our base coats on on Catacross now. He's looking pretty cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some shades. Now the first one we're going to add is Targor Raid Shade. And we're going to apply this over the top of the gold like this. We're going to apply this over the top of the flesh.
like that. We're also going to apply this over the top of the red. like that. And what we're also going to do is on some of the kind of larger areas of bone, I'm just going to add a little bit of this. Around here on the back. Like that sort of thing. So with that Targo Raid shader applied, we're then going to take some Nuln Oil and we're going to use this to shade the blade. Like this. And then what we're also going to do with the null oil is on our cloak back here, we're going to use this to basically do like a recess shade. Adding a little bit more depth. To all those darker parts. And with that null oil all applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Drakenhof Nightshade and we're going to use this over the top of the blue. So we just want to bring that colour down a little bit. But not too much. And so with that done, we're then going to take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this over the top of all of our remaining gems. So we've got these ones here on the shield facing. Like that. Put the ones on the halberd. that one there and there is another one just up here upon his brow so with all of those shades and that black legion applied catacross himself is now what i would call a war hipster battle ready however it's not quite war hipster battle ready it is by the usual definition of that made up term. However, <laughs> it's not quite there because what we want to do is we want to brighten up his kind of skeleton. So whilst this is moving on to the next stage of bringing him up and adding layers and highlights to the next level, this is also kind of technically part of the battle ready stage. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down deep kin flesh. And we're going to apply this over the top of all of our green bones just avoiding where the Baletown Green has settled in the recesses. So 
So with all that deep kin flesh applied, as you can see, he's really taken a massive leap forward and he's looking pretty awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the highlighting because he's now officially a, a war hipster battle ready. Now, the colour we're going to be using is Pallid Witch Flesh and, well, we might as well just continue with all of the bones and we're going to use this to, well, highlight all of his bones. So with that done, Cantacross's body is actually finished. It looks absolutely fantastic. I do hope you all agree. So what we're going to do is move on now to the rest of his bones. And the colour we're going to be using to highlight these is Corax White. And we're just going to start here on the shield, I think. And what we're going to do is just start picking out all the edges. Now, we don't need to highlight the darkest parts where we've done all that blending. But we should highlight over the top of the blend. So for example, we're not gonna do around that little edge on the bone. But as you've seen, I've done those little spines just there. this. So with that Corax white applied to all of our bones, as you can see, all of our bones are finished and they look fabulous. So what we're going to do now is move on to the cloak. It's the next big thing to do. And we're going to add some highlights here. So the color that we're going to use first is Cyberite Green. And what we're going to do so we're just going to pick a place to start and I'm going to start just kind of right here in the middle. And we're just going to start picking out all of the sharp edges. So with that cyberite green all applied, what we're then going to do is take some gorse blaster green. I'm going to apply this to the sharpest corners. In the cloak. Like that. And what we're also going to do with the Gorse Blaster Green is we're going to apply this inside the runes on the shield. sort of thing. So with that Gorse Blaster Green applied, the cloak is now finished. So what we're going to do is move on to the next colour. Don't worry about those runes for now, we are going to come back to them a bit later. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Alatoc Blue. And we're going to use this to highlight all of our blue.
So with that Latoc blue applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Hoeth blue. And what we're going to do is spin it down with four or five parts water. Because we want this to be really, really thin, almost like a glaze consistency, if you can see there on my thumb. Thumb there, it's very, very, very thin. And what we're going to do is we're going to add that kind of shine that we have. So what you want, is you don't want very much of this on your brush, and you want to build this up. By just adding a little kind of mountain. Next to the rivet. Just like this. So with that done, what we're then gonna do is take some thinned down Fenrisian gray. I'm gonna use this to pick out the rivets. On the shield, like that, and we're going to use it to add a little spot highlight to the helmet too. But what we're also going to do is we're going to use this to highlight the sharp point on each of those segments of the shield like that that sort of amount and then we take a little tiny dot of the Fenrisian grey and then just in the middle of where we just did that little Hoeth blue glaze we had a little dot So with that done, the blue of the shield and the helmet is now finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep working on that shield and we're going to take bale tan green once again. And we're going to apply this over the top of our runes. Like so. Whilst we wait for that bale tan green to dry, we're going to take some thinned down Liberator Gold. I'm going to use this to highlight all the gold in the spirit of not quite finishing things off just yet. <laughs> What we're going to do is, before we finish off the gold, we're actually going to move on to the gems. And the colour that we're going to be using to highlight these is Fenrisian Grey. I want really, really narrow little tiny highlights here.
just like this. What we're also going to do is highlight the runes. So with that done, what we're going to do is we're going to finish off the gems by taking some blue horror. I'm going to apply this on the sharpest points. of each of them. Like this. So with that done, all of those kind of black details, the gems and this kind of facing here on the shield are now done, including the ones up here, here, and here. So what we're gonna, oh, and the ones on the halberd glaive thing. What we're going to do now is, well, we're still waiting to finish all that gold because what we need to do is we need to brighten up our weapon a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some thin down lead belcher and we're going to apply this over the top of the cutting part of the blade. Like so. So that done, whilst we're waiting for it to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Fire Dragon Bright and thin it down with three or four parts of water. And we're going to apply this to the inside of the runes on the blade. So with that now done, we're going to take some Black Templar and we're going to apply this over the top of the flat of the blade. Now we don't need loads here, we just want to add a little touch of extra darkness. Just like that. Really a small amount. So with that Black Templar now applied, we're going to take some Iron Breaker. I'm going to use this to highlight the blade. And so with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Stormhost Silver. We're going to apply this to the sharpest points on the silver and on all the gold. So with that all done, the halberd is finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take some thinned down flayed one flesh and we're going to use this to add some highlights to the skin. Now we're mostly just going to look at picking out these little ties like that. Whereas on the rest of the skin, we just want to kind of pick out the sharpest points. And so with that now done, what we're going to do we're gonna well finish him off because we've got this one last thing to do which is the bird now the color that we're going to be using is dawnstone and we're going to use this to just pick out all of the feathers So with that, Catacross is now finished. He looks fabulous. So we're now going to move on 
to the next bit, which is, of course, the base. Now, the colour we're going to be using first is Rattling Grime, and we're going to be applying this over the top of all of our stonework. However, what we're going to avoid is we're going to avoid the kind of patterned tops. So like this bit here, here, up around here. Is there any more? It doesn't look like it. But what we're going to do is we're going to apply this rattling grime over the top of the rest of it, just like this. We're looking to get a pretty decently smooth coverage here. So if you need to, do just pull some out, pop it on your palette, add a little bit of contrast medium, just to improve the flow. You do want to make sure that you work this right into all of those recesses. There's all the cracks in the masonry and things like that. So with that rattling grime applied to all of these rocks, as you can see, what we're going to do now is we're going to take some skeleton hoard and we're going to apply this over the top of all of that fancy work on the tops that we didn't do before. Now, it is gonna be darker than this, but we're gonna start pale with Skeleton Horde. This way we've got more space to come down in color. Whereas if we went for something like Agaros Dunes, we've got a lot less room for maneuverability. So with that skeleton hoard applied and drying, what we're going to do is we're going to take some black Templar and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the loose soil. So with all of that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Targor Rage Shade and we're going to use this to shade all of our rattling grime and we're going to apply this over the top of all the Skeleton Horde as well. And here we can be a little bit more liberal and messy with the paint than we were with the rattling grime. We've got shade paints going on now. There we go, that's an entire section done in half the time. Similarly, you can see on this stonework just here, we're going to apply the Targal Raid Shade like that. And that will take a lot of the colour out, but that's okay because we've got another shade to apply. So with that Targor Raid shade applied all over, it's still very much drying as you can see. So what we're gonna do is leave it alone just for the moment. We're actually just gonna move on to the next color. And that is going to be some Agrax Earth shade. And we're gonna apply this over the top of all of the bones. So with that Agrax Earth shade all applied, and we're now going to do is we're going to take some Seraphim Sepia, and we're going to apply this over the top of our skeleton horde areas. Like that, just add a little bit more warmth back in. So, that brush wants to say hello. Hello brush. I 
like so. And what we're going to do with the Seraphim Sepia is we're going to pick out some of the bones, not all of them, just to create a little bit of variation on the model. So we're going to apply some Seraphim Sepia just over this one. Like that. And we'll apply some over this large skull just here as well. So with that now done, we're going to take some Pilar Glacier and we're going to apply this over the top of our two shield fronts. So we've got this one round here. We're going to apply this over. Like that. And then we've got the one round here on the back as well. And then next up, we're going to take some Griff Charger Grey. I'm going to apply this over the top of our little jar just down here. Like this. And then what we're also going to do with it is we're going to add this as a little bit of a shade over the top of all of our Black Templar soil. And so with that Griff Charger Grey applied, we're then going to take some Castellax Bronze and we're going to apply this over the top of all of our remaining details. This is all the metallic stuff. So we've got bits of armour. Trim on those shield bits. So with that all done, what we're going to do now is we're going to take some Agrax Earthshade and we need this to shade all of our bronzy bits. And so with that done, what we're going to do now is we're going to add a dry brush. And the dry brush is going to be some Tyrant Skull. And we're going to use this over the top of everything. Not cut across. All of his base. So with that done, we can put this section of the model to bed. <laughs> so it's looking pretty awesome, but we do have his friends to do now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in order from left to the right. So this means that the first one that we're going to start work on is this guy here. Now we're not going to cover them in detail too much, especially when there's things that we've already done. Uh, but for some of the things that we haven't done, of course, we shall cover them properly. So starting with this guy, as mentioned, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this over the top of all of his bones because we've already done this color on the bird on his shield of Catacross. So we're just going to apply this Black Legion all over all of his body bones like this and then once that's done we'll come back so with that black legion all applied we're then going to take some flesh terrors red I'm going to apply this over all of the red details. So this is going to be, in this guy's instance, his cloak and the soft wraps of his weapons. So 
So with all of that red applied, we're then going to take some Leviathan blue. I'm going to apply this over top of all of his armor. And with that Leviathan blue applied, we're then going to take Pterodon turquoise. I'm going to apply this over top of his tabard. With that pterodon turquoise applied, we're then going to take Gilliman Flesh. We're going to apply that over the top of the scabbard. Scabbards? The scabbards. And with that now done, we're going to take Briar Queen Chill. And we're going to apply this over the top of the sash. And so in a slight departure to cat across himself, what we're going to do is we're going to take some null oil. And we're going to apply this over the top of all of his remaining bones. So we did a lot of kind of blending and things on cat across. We've got lots of large bones and things like that. Whereas for him, a simple coat of null oil will suffice. And with that done, I'm then going to take some thin down iron warriors and apply this over the blade. And for our final base coat, we're going to take some retributor armor and apply this over the top of the little doodad at the top here. So with that done, we've got all of our base coats on on this fella. So it's now time to shade them. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Targor Raid Shade and we're gonna use this over the top of the gold, just like we did on Catacross. And we're gonna use this over the top of all of the red. With that Targor Rage shade applied, we then take Null Oil and we apply this over the top of the blade. And with that Null Oil applied, we're then going to take Drakenhof Nightshade and we're going to apply this over the top of the blue. What we're also going to do is we're going to apply this over the top of the tabard. And so with that done, what we're going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and wildwood, and we're going to use this to make that cloak even darker. But we are going to do a little bit of blending here. So what we want to do is we want to kind of, I'm going to start on this side. We're going to take this mix and we want to apply this all over the cloak. I'm going to come down all the way across like that. That feels like a good place to stop we're going to wash the brush and then towards the bottom we're just going to absorb and lift off the paint like that so it goes from the dark down to the slightly brighter shaded target or raid shade areas do the same thing across here. Like that. Bring it around the corner. Like so. Wash the brush. And then once again.
lift off the paint. Just absorbing it with the brush. Wash the brush one more time. And then the easy part is that we just apply this over the top of this kind of top part of the cloak. Like that. So with that done, this gentleman is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready. So we can actually pop him to one side and once he's fully dry, I will snap him off this base and glue him onto the rest of Catacross. Because, well, we've done the difficult part now. It'll just be a case of doing some highlights later. But because we've got a lot of consistent colors here and a lot of them have already appeared in the video, we will just do all of that together once we get towards the end. As we mentioned, we've got those specific details to pick out. So have his, like his sash and his cloak. It's important to point that out at this point. Still drying at the moment, but it looks absolutely lovely. I think you'll agree. So we're going to pop him to one side and I will snap him off and glue him to the diorama base. But what we're going to do now is move on to the next one, which is this gentleman here. The one that sits on the front, holding up the scroll for Catacross to read. Now, the colour we're going to be using first for him is Skeleton Horde. And we're going to be applying this over the top of all of his bones and over the top of all of his parchment. Now it will look the same, but we will change the properties of the bones using a shade. So don't worry too much. So with that skeleton horde applied all over these details, what we're then going to do is we're going to shade all of the bones using some seraphim sepia. So with that seraphim sepia applied, we're then going to take Terradon turquoise and we're going to apply this all over the top of his robes. And so with that done, we're then going to once again use our three parts Terradon turquoise to one part Leviathan blue mix. And I've added a little bit of contrast medium in there just to improve the flow. And we're going to apply this over the top of the robe. So with that now done, it is still drying at the moment, but what we can do is move on. And the colour we're going to use it next is Gore Grunter Fur. And we're going to apply this all over the top of the little parchment bag. A little mess messenger bag. That's what that is. <laughs> so with that Gore Grunter Fur applied, what we then do is take some flesh tear as red. And we're going to apply this over the top of the strap going around the body. Like this, it comes right under there.
as well. Like that. And then what we're also going to do with the Flesh Terror's Red, if you need to, do go down to a smaller brush. What we're going to do here is we're going to apply this inside all of the markings. on the paper. So with that Flesh Terror's Red applied, as you can see, what we're then gonna do is take some Wildwood and we're gonna apply this to the string. And with that wildwood applied, we're then going to take some Retributor armor. I'm going to apply this to the medallion. Like that. And we're going to apply it to the, the rollers on the scrollers. And so with that Retributor armor now applied, we then take some Agrax Earthshade and we use this over the top of the gold and we use this over the top of that little bit of bone just there as well. So with that Agrax Earthshade applied, this gentleman is now War Hipster Battle ready. So we've popped him onto the base as you can see, two down, two to go. So we're gonna move on to the next one, which is the one that stands next to him. It's this guy with the birds. So the color we're gonna be using is Rattling Grime. And we're gonna be applying this over the top of all of his body bones, as I'm now taking to calling them. Just like we did with the Black Legion on the first one and the Skeleton Horde on the second. And so with that Rattling Grime all applied, we're then gonna take Pterodon Turquoise. And we're gonna apply this over the top of his robes. And whilst we wait for that Pterodon Turquoise to dry, we're gonna take some Leviathan Blue and we're gonna apply this over top of his armor. And so with that Leviathan Blue applied, we then take Flesh Terror's Red and we apply this to the wrap on the staff. And with that Flesh Terror's Red applied, we then take Briar Queen Chill and we apply this over the top of the two small birds. And you might be thinking, hey, there's three small birds. Well, yeah, but these are the really small birds. <laughs> so we're gonna apply this over the top of this one in his hand. And the one that's inside the cage. After all, you know what they say. A bird in the hand is worth one in a cage. That's the saying, right? And with that Bri Queen chill applied, we then take some wild wood and we apply this to the wood. And so with that Wildwood applied, we're then going to take Black Legion and we're going to apply this over the top of 
this little bit of string just here like that and we're going to apply this over the top of our bird on top of the little cage and what we're going to do is we're going to avoid the head of the bird and the legs So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some shyish purple and we're going to apply this over the top of our bottle just here, avoiding the label. And so with that now done, we're going to take some Targor Raid Shade and we're going to apply this over the top of the bones on his head. And the trim on his armor. But not the ones on the staff. For the bones on the staff, what we're going to do is we're going to take Griff Charger Grey. I'm going to use this for these. So we've got the trim up here. Like that. Got the trim under here. And with that now done, we're then going to take some skeleton horde. I'm going to apply this over the top of the head of our bird up there and the legs as well. Like that, and we're going to apply this over the top of the label on the bottle. Like that. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to whip up another batch of our three parts pterodon turquoise to one part leviathan blue mix. We've also got bale tan green open over here for a reason, which I will demonstrate to you in just a second. Because what we're going to do is we're going to apply this over the top of our robe as we've done so far on most of our other pterodon turquoisey areas like that sort of thing but what we're also going to do is we're going to apply this over the top of the candle like this we're going to take it all the way over the top of the flame which might seem counterintuitive for the moment but Get this all over first. Once we've done that, we wash the brush, grab the bale tan green, and whilst it's still wet, we're going to apply this over the top of the flame like that. A little bit more. And so with that all done, we then take Hex Wraith Flame and we apply this over the top of the base of that candle flame. Like that, so it gets this nice kind of sort of blend up to the tip. Like that, and we just kind of Add it into the wax as well. 
Look at that. And so with that done, what we now do is we take some Iron Warriors and we apply this over the bars of the cage. Like that sort of thing, and the hooks on the back. And with all that Iron Warriors applied, we then take some Retributor armor and we apply this over the top of the little sigil at the top on the head. Like that. So with that now done, it's time to do the shades. The first one is going to be Drakenhof Nightshade. I'm going to apply this over the top of all of the armor, but also over the main body of the candle. Like that. And with that now done, we turn null null ill. I'm going to use that over the top of the silver and the gold and over the top of the bones on his headdress as well just to kind of add a little bit more depth to those Targor raid shaded areas So with those shades applied, three out of four ain't bad being at War Hipster Battle ready now. So what we're going to do is move on to the last member, the one who you could, well, I'm going to describe him as the hype man. <laughs> so the color that we're going to use for this guy first is Shaiish Purple. And we're going to apply this over the top of his cloak. So with that now done, we're then going to take Pterodon Turquoise and we're going to apply this over his tabard and over the top of the flag. As we've done several times already, whilst we're waiting for that to dry, we're going to take Leviathan Blue. I'm going to apply this over the top of all of this fella's armour. And so with that Leviathan Blue applied, we're then going to take Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to apply this over the top of all of his body bones. And with that now done, we're going to take some wild wood and we're going to apply this in two different ways. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply this over the top of all of our leather details. So we've got areas such as the little scabbard just here at his hip, but not the one on the back. As well as over the top of any kind of little straps and things. Like that sort of thing. We've got a couple more straps. In there. And what we're also going to do is we're going to apply this over the top of the Shaiish purple. Like that. Then we're going to wash the brush 
and just around the hem of the cape. We're going to lift some of it off by just feathering away. And with that now done, we're then going to take Gilliman flesh and we're going to apply this over the top of the scabbard. And then next up, we're going to take some flesh terrors red and apply this over the soft wraps on the banner and the sword. And so with that now done, we're going to take some null oil and we're going to apply this over the top of all of our remaining bones. So with that now done, we're going to take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this over a couple of different details. So we've got this gem on the top here of the sword. Like that. We've got one up here as well. We've got the little panels that we're going to do in black as well. Like that. And we've got the big stone. top of the standard. And so with that done, we're then going to make our roughly three parts pterodon turquoise to one part Levide and blue mix. And we're going to apply this over the top of the banner and the tabard. And what we're going to do here is we're going to apply this over the top of the outside of the flag, but only of the kind of bits on the inside. We're going to leave that. We want that to be a different color. And what we're going to do is we're going to get this over the top of the whole of the front of the banner and on the back as well. And you get this over the top like this. And then we're going to wash the brush and then towards the bottom, we're just going to wipe off some of that paint to give us that nice blend out. That sort of thing. And so with that now done, we're going to take some thinned down retributor armor. I'm going to apply this to all of our gold details. So we've got a little bit of metallic in here. So we're going to apply this over top of is the belt buckle. Like that. We've got this guy's kind of runic medallion. There, like that. I got this little panel in here and in there, like so. We've got the two little buckler shaped objects. Up here on the flag, like so. We've got this clasp on the back here. And we've got the design on the flag itself.
And with that done, we're then gonna take some Iron Warriors. I'm gonna apply this over the two little rings up here. And so with that done, nice and simply, we're gonna take some Targor Raid Shade and we're gonna use this to shade all the gold and the silver and the red on the staff. And so with that, cat across is now and is entourage our war hipster battle ready now we are going to add some highlights here and we're going to rapid fire these as well because well we've done all of these before on the man himself so we're going to start with all of the black details same as the bird we're going to use some thinned down dawnstone here So with that Dawnstone all applied, we're then going to take some Administratum Grey and we're going to use this on the sharpest points of all of the black details. Like that. And we're also going to use this to highlight our Rattling Grime fellow. So with that all done, all of the black is now finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Hoeth Blue we don't need to do as much highlighting on the smaller armor details. And we're going to use this to highlight all of our blue armor. And so with all of that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thin down cyberite green. I'm going to use this to highlight all of our turquoise areas. And with all of that cyberite green applied, we then take some thinned down gorse blaster green and we use this on the sharpest points of all of our turquoisey areas. And in addition, what we're gonna do is we're going to run this Gorse Blaster green into the runes on the banner. So with that now done, all of the turquoise is finished. So what we're going to do is move on to all of the bones. And well, the color we're going to be using for this is Corax White. And what we're going to do is we're going to, in addition, add a little tip of this Corax White to the candle there. And what I mean we're highlighting all the bones, we're highlighting all of the kind of extra bone trim and things like that. And so with that now done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Liberator Gold. I'm gonna use this to highlight all of our gold details. So with that now done, what we're going to do is take some striking scorpion green. There's one thing I've forgotten to do, and that's to apply a little bit of this over the top of all of their eyes. And you just want to catch the edges around the eyeballs. Just add the slightest hint of green in there. And we're also going to do the same thing on Cat Across himself. So 
So with that done, we're then gonna apply some thinned down iron breaker as a highlight for all of our silver. So with that iron breaker applied, we're then gonna take some slanesh gray. I'm gonna use this to highlight the purple bottle just down here. Just like that, doesn't need too much. And I'm gonna use this to add a little spot highlight picking out the rips and sharpest points on our cloak up here. And similarly with that slanesh gray applied to that cloak, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm gonna use this to pick out the sharpest points and the rips in our red cloak. Just here. And so with that done, just to finish him off, we're gonna take some Screaming Skull. I'm gonna use this to pick out the sharpest points in the skin and on the parchment. this dude just here. So with that now done, Catacross is finished. And he looks absolutely fantastic, as does the rest of his entourage. I hope you'll agree. I'm very, very pleased with this. Ed, I hope you're pleased. So the only thing left to do is to finish off the base. And well, we're going to just quickly do this gentleman's feet. And we're going to do them in the same style as the rest of the base. So we're not going to film all of that. We're just going to take the skeleton horde and apply this over the, the fancy scroll work. We use rattling grime over the top of the non-fancy stuff. We use black templar over the top of the loose soil. And we're going to use Targor Raid Shade and Seraphim Sepia to shade it. And so with that done, it is time for a break. Before we can do that, <laughs> we're going to take some Astro Granite Debris and we're gonna apply this over the top of all of our negative space on the base. So with that Astro Granite debris all applied and dry, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna shade it down. This is gonna be the same color that we use for all of the fallen soil, the loose soil. So we're gonna take some Black Templar and we're gonna apply this all over the top, just like this. I'm just gonna slap it on here, which is nice. All the precision work is gone, hooray. And so with all of that Black Templar applied to all the Astro Granite debris, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna dry brush the whole base using some Tyrant Skull. We've already done this once. We're just gonna do this again over the top of all of that negative space. And if you need to add a little bit more to the main base, you can at this point. And this is our final, final coat. And of course, beyond this, you can add some tufts if you wish. You can paint the rim of your base to match the rest of your army. And so with that dry brush applied, the tufts added, little beige ones from Gamers Grass, and an Abaddon black rim applied, Catacross, the Mortark of the Necropolis, is now finished. And I think he's absolutely stunning miniature. He's one of those diorama miniatures that Games Workshop were doing for a little bit with the Triumph of St. Catherine's, another one that springs to mind. And I think this one is absolutely the best one. I wanted to paint it for ages, and I think it's absolutely, truly phenomenal. Oh, just behold. Ed, I hope you're happy with this one. I painted this for Ed, and I hope it inspires a massive Ossiarch Bone Reapers project.
If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you could become a YouTube member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these amazing, wonderful people have done. And if you really like this video or you just want to shoot me some support, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.